Hey everyone, Miss Forkren here. Welcome back to another lesson. We are gonna dive right in to talk about physical properties today. Now, last class, you already learned three different physical properties that you can observe without chemically changing a substance. And those three properties were melting point, boiling point, and solubility. But I've got three more for you today, okay? And those three are going to be electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, and magnetism. We're gonna go over, I'm gonna have you guys get the definitions of these three terms and show you guys little demos about each one in just a second. Okay, let's break down our first term, electrical conductivity. Now we already know that electrical sounds like electricity, but what does conductivity actually mean? And for that, let's take a look at our definition of electrical conductivity. It is simply how well a substance conducts or moves electricity through it. When we think of conductivity, it's how well a substance can move whatever we are talking about through it. So if a substance is a good conductor of electricity, it can move electricity through it very well. And we are going to see what that looks like right now. But first, let's get this definition of electrical conductivity in your notes. All right, when we think about electrical conductivity, let's think about this flashlight and what actually makes the flashlight work. Now, if we open it up, inside, we've got the batteries, right? But there's something that's very important about the way that this flashlight was made that makes the batteries work. Now, the batteries are just a power source. They need a way to get the energy stored in the batteries into this light bulb to make the light bulb light up. And how do most flashlights do that? With metal. If you notice here on the inside of this flashlight, there's the metal spring at the bottom, there's metal running all up the side of the flashlight, and there's even a tiny metal spring at the top of the head of the flashlight here because metal and metals in general are really good conductors of electricity. They allow electricity to move through them, which helps us do a lot of things like light a flashlight with these batteries or power a radio or anything else that requires batteries. There's metal touching every part of the battery inside of something like a flashlight when you complete the circuit so that the electricity can flow from the battery to the light. All right, let's move on to our second physical property. We just talked about electrical conductivity, but what is thermal conductivity? Well, we already know that to be able to conduct or to have conductivity is to be able to move something through a substance, but what exactly is thermal? Thermal is just another word for heat. So simply, thermal conductivity is just how well a substance conducts or moves heat through it. And we're gonna take a look right now at sub substances that are good conductors of heat and move heat through them very well and poor conductors of heat that do not do such a good job at moving heat through them. All right, let's take a look at thermal conductivity and what it actually means to be a good conductor of heat and be able to pass heat through a substance well. To do that, I've got two different types of substances in front of me here. I have a uh, cube made out of metal and I have a block made out of wood. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put an ice cube on each of these substances and I'm gonna turn on the heat on this little hot plate right here. And we're gonna take a look at which one of these substances can actually melt the ice more quickly and whichever one melts the ice more quickly you got it that's the one that is the better conductor of heat that has good thermal conductivity all right so here i've got two ice cubes of about the same size i'm going to put them on each of our substances and let's see what happens So as we could see, the metal basically started melting the ice right away. And still on our wood block, we have a basically whole piece of ice. That's because metals in general are good 
conductors of heat. They have good thermal conductivity. Nonmetals, on the other hand, are usually poor conductors of heat. They're not very good at letting heat pass through them. So that's why our ice cube is still intact at the top of our wood block, but not our metal block. All right, let's quickly talk about our third and final physical property for the day. Last, we've got the property of magnetism. If you're thinking in your head, Ms. Forkren, that word sounds a lot like magnet, you are absolutely on the right track. All magnetism is, is the ability of a substance to be attracted to a magnet. So we're gonna look at right now what substances um, are usually attracted to magnets and which ones are not. And it might surprise you. All right, we just learned that magnetism is the physical property that describes a substance's ability to be attracted to a magnet. And I've got some common substances right here, and we're gonna take a look at what sorts of substances are and are not attracted to my magnet right here. First, I've got a cotton ball in front of me. And when we think about this cotton ball, we can classify it as something that is non-metal, it is made of cotton. When we try this with our magnet, it doesn't stick. So cotton balls, not magnetic. Let's try our rubber band here and see if our rubber band is magnetic. Looks like it's not, but I've got some staples. And let's see, my staples here are made of a certain type of metal and let's see if they are magnetic. It turns out our staples here are actually magnetic. So we've got one of our items is magnetic. Now let's try our penny. Okay, penny, not magnetic. And finally, we will try our aluminum foil. All right, nope. Not working either. Out of all of the materials we tried, only the staples here were magnetic. And when we talked about electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity, about how metals for the most part are both good conductors of heat and electricity, not all metals are magnetic. So we need to keep that in mind. There are actually only three metals on the periodic table that are magnetic, while the rest, like aluminum, like copper, just simply won't work and do not have the property of magnetism. Okay guys, quick review. We got three new physical properties today. Electrical conductivity, the ability for a substance to move electricity through it. Thermal conductivity, the ability of a substance to move heat through it, as well as magnetism, the ability to be attracted to a magnet. Now, just like melting point, boiling point, and solubility, all of these physical properties are independent of sample size. It does not matter how much of that sample you have, it's going to have the same electrical thermal conductivity and magnetism. If we had a huge wood block or a small wood block there in that beaker trying to melt that ice, no matter what, if it was the same type of wood, it would still be a poor conductor of heat because it is a substance that overall is a poor conductor. So I hope you guys learned a lot today. I will see you in class later. Have a good day.